2026 has just started and if you're watching this video then you probably already know that data engineering is one of the most future-proof tech careers that you can pick right now but what's the reality of this year let's look at the market analysis and here's the indian job markets data for data engineering roles as per experience level this is obviously an average with fang or similar level companies paying way over one crore for sought after candidates even for US, based on the market data for 2026, senior data engineers will command higher expectations ranging from about $147 to $183,000, underscoring significant impact of advanced expertise in this field. But here's the catch. Interview bar has never been higher. With the advancements of AI tools and workflow automation pipelines out there, companies are not just looking for somebody who can write some good script. They want engineers who can architect, optimize, and scale their data infrastructure. Whether you're a student, an analyst who is looking to pivot, or an experienced engineer who is simply overwhelmed by the number of tools which are out there in the market, like Airflow, Kafka, Spark, DBT, Kubernetes, and many more, you're not alone. Today, we are going to cut through that noise. We are looking at top 10 skills that you will need to ace any data engineering interviews and it's all coming from my personal experience as well as what I've seen in the industry in past six plus years of experience that I have in data and AI field. I've worked at different companies like DoorDash, Google, CS. Okay, so let's divide you, our viewers, into two simple categories, freshers and experienced folks. I'm going to specifically say what are the skills that freshers will need and from exactly which point of this video, I will be talking about the skills which are required by experienced folks. So it doesn't matter what your background is, this video will definitely be useful for you. By the way, every resource that I'm going to show you on the screen, I'm also going to link it in the description. And since this is the first video of 2026, what I have ensured is every resource that I'm going to recommend is completely free. So let's dive right in. Skill number one, and honestly, if you don't take anything else away from this video, at least remember this, when it comes to data, SQL is king. It doesn't matter how good you are at Python or DSA, if you cannot manipulate database efficiently with SQL, then this is not the right role for you. In an interview, they're likely going to hand you out an ERD, which is an entity relationship diagram, and will ask you to solve analytical queries on top of that. There are four types of operations that you have to be really comfortable with. One is joints, not just inner joints, but left joints, right joints, outer joints, full joints or cross joints, or even some advanced topics like anti-joints if possible. Window functions like rank or lead or lag or row number, if you don't know them, then you need to start practicing tonight. You can use SQL Bold to learn SQL freely and practice as well. I'm also going to link this article in the description which specifically focuses on window functions. Table relationships, understand what is one-to-one, one-to-many or many-to-many -many relationship and how it all works when you're joining things together. CTEs and sub queries. You need to structure your queries so that it's easily readable and understandable. Don't forget to do the SQL specific question on lead code as well. It's the best way to uh, keep those joints sharp and you can start with SQL basic 50 and then go to advanced 50. All right, now let's talk about skill number two, Python. While SQL handles your database side, Python is how you are going to actually build uh, those standard data pipelines. For example, you need to be really comfortable with built-in data structures like lists, tuples, sets, dictionaries. Also brush up on object oriented programming. You should understand classes, inheritance, iterators. You often have to wrap your pipeline logic into reusable classes. So this is non-negotiable. Skill number three. Yes, I know it's DSA. It is one skill that we love to hate, but to be honest, it's always going to be a part of software engineering and you cannot get away with at least one DSA round throughout your entire interview loop because data engineering is a subset of software engineering. Although data engineering interview DSA rounds are not generally as hard as back-end engineers or uh, full-stack engineers, for example. So that's where we have a little bit of relief. You need to be practicing data structures and algorithms. I highly recommend checking out the lead code 150 list. Skill number four, data modeling. Now we are slightly entering into the territory that kind of separates juniors versus seniors. In data warehousing, you need to explain things like what is dimensional modeling, what are facts and dimension tables, and what is slowly changing dimension. Make sure that you can explain the difference between type one, type two, and type three. You should also understand storage formats like Parquet and ORC, 
or why do we use columnar storage for analytics instead of row based on the flip side we have oltp or olap specifically let's say for oltp which is like more transactional database why do we use row based formatting instead of columnar and how do you do bulk operations in productions without affecting its data for olap systems how do columnar databases like bigquery or snowflake or redshift work from an architecture point of view for example a typical snowflake question is what is micro partitioning and how does it work? There are some topics specifically you can focus on for all apps. For example, how do you separate out the compute and storage? It's typically done in most analytical databases. Data partitioning and external tables are also important concepts here. Now, before we talk about the next section, I would just like to highlight that if you're a fresher or somebody who has less than one year of experience, the video up till, up till this point is gold for you. But anything that I say from this point onward might not be something that you are tested on. Yes, it is good to learn these concepts if you are interested in data engineering as a field. But these are generally the rounds which are specifically reserved for experienced engineers. Skill number five is data pipelines. This is like bread and butter of the job. If you are an experienced engineer, then you will definitely be asked, uh, build a data pipeline kind of a question. They're not just looking for, okay, what tools should you use, but they're also looking for reliability. How do you handle dependencies? What happens if the pipeline fails? How do you backfill the missing data? How do you test your data? You need to clearly explain the difference between ETL versus ELT and why the industry has largely shifted towards ETL like tools using DBT, for example, and Snowflake or BigQuery. You should also know things like how to create airflow DAGs, how to load data into a warehouse. Also a pro tip, know what idempotency means. Idempotent pipelines are pipelines that can be rerun without really affecting the data. If you drop that word in an interview and use it correctly in your data pipeline, then you kind of makes you look like a pro. There are many such concepts. In fact, like this, I'm going to drop the reading material for each of them in the description below. Okay, now I'm going to group the skills number six, seven and eight into a broader group and call it something like system architecture. Skill number six is distributed systems. So you don't need to build Spark from scratch or install it on your laptop, for example, in an interview, but you need to understand how it works. Read up on Apache Spark architecture, understand how it handles storage and processing data in parallel. Skill number seven is event processing. Batch processing is great, but world is moving into real-time processing. For example, when you scroll on your Insta feed, based on the reads that you have watched live, next reads are recommended so that they can keep you hooked. This is a typical example of a real-time data pipeline and an event processing system like Kafka is crucial if you need to build one of these pipelines. So you need to know uh, what is Kafka, how it works, when to use it versus when to just create a standard batch job. Another compute platform that you should learn about from Kafka is Flink because while Spark is really good for batch or near real-time architecture, mostly for real-time components, Flink is better. And that leads to skill number eight, which is system design. It's almost like boss fight of your data engineering interview. And it's one of my favorite rounds because everything that you say, all the uh, answers that you give are really, really subjective. So there's no one right answer that everybody can pick for a system design. It, more or less depends on how do you explain yourself in the interview. For example, they might ask how would you design a clickstream user tracking system like Instagram that tracks your interests through the reels that you watch? Or how would you replicate a production database into a warehouse without any downtime? To understand these concepts better, I'm going to link a couple of different pipelines in the description. One is batch and then another one is real time. If you go through these articles, it will really help you uh, understand how do you think about these different types of pipeline in a system design round. Sometimes it would also include traditional backend software engineering components. So in that case, you may need to talk about CDC, change data capture, caching, load balancing, API gateways, or how do you collect data directly from the source? So brush up on those concepts as well. Also one pro tip, understanding how containers, for example, Docker or containerized ecosystem like Kubernetes works will also be to your advantage specifically for this round. Okay, so now we are almost in home stretch. Skill number nine is business specific questions. For example, you can be asked to design metrics to track performance of an upcoming product launch, how to calculate it and why you chose it, etc. You might also be asked about the impact of the project that you did previously. You need to see the STAR method to organize your responses correctly and answer the questions related to business metrics. Skill number 10 is cloud computing. See, it's 2026. And if you don't know cloud computing, 
you don't know data engineering and the thing is you don't need to be certified in all cloud platforms or anything pick any one cloud platform gcp or aws or azure as you as long as you pick any one of these three cloud platforms you're good you need to know some of their core services with respect to data world for example storage and databases like s3 rds dynamodb compute like ec2 or lambda warehousing like redshift or snowflake big data processing and streaming like emr kinesis managed kafka flink etc data engineering is a massive massive field but remember an expert started exactly where you are right now just staring at a list of tools and feeling completely overwhelmed that's why i'm here to help you out on this journey mastering all individual tools is not essential focus on the fundamentals understand the why behind an architecture and i promise you'll be good if you found this video useful don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel share this video with aspiring or existing data engineers to get their thoughts on it and also uh, if you want more such deep dives on any specific topics, feel free to drop a comment down there. I try to respond to a lot of comments in the comment section. And if you want to practice these skills, then don't forget to check out the resources that I've linked in the description. And that's it from my side. See you next time.